The Caucasus Mountains, between the Black and Caspian Seas, are traditionally the geographic boundary between Europe and Asia. As such, they are part of important trade routes and have been fought over throughout human history. By the early modern period, the territory was disputed among three major powers – Russia, Persia, and the Ottoman Empire. The first two of these spent centuries trading the lands back and forth, all while hoping to keep the third out completely. While there had been trade between Persia and Russia as long as both nations had existed, the relationship grew in the 16th century mainly due to an Ottoman blockade against Persia beginning in 1514. By the end of that century, a bustling trade in silk, leather goods, furs, and other luxuries was well established. Alongside trade goods came envoys and information, and a loose anti-Ottoman understanding developed between Persia and Russia. The conflicts between the Persians and the Ottomans had its basis in religion, with the Shia Safavids of Persia opposing the Sunni Turks of the Ottoman Empire. As is often the case, however, the religious differences served only to give additional reasoning and justification for territorial and political disputes. The conflict between the Russians and the Ottomans also had religious elements, with Muslims living in Russian territory and Christians in Ottoman territory. But these tended to be secondary to disputes over access to the Black Sea, and from there, the Mediterranean. And so, the Russians and the Persians had a common enemy in the Ottoman Empire. But that did not prevent wars between them. In the first decade of the 17th century, the Persians and Ottomans fought for control of the Caucasus. Persia requested aid from its Russian ally, and some was sent, but the Russians were embroiled in a succession crisis and civil war. By the time things settled down in Russia, with the accession of Michael Romanov in 1613, Persia had gained control over the lands between the Black and Caspian Seas. The ethnic connections of the people in this area further played into conflicts between the two countries. In the 1630s, the Russian Cossacks began building up forces in support of King Taimuraz I of Georgia, who had been removed from his throne by his Persian overlord. They pushed into Persian-held territory around the Sulak and Tarak rivers, prompting a brief war between Russia and Persia. It was cut short by more important conflicts, pulling them away from each other. A Mughal invasion of Kandahar on Persia's eastern border was far more potentially damaging to Persia, and so they withdrew from the Caucasus, while the Russia got involved in a war in Poland, the potential gains of which were much more in line with their desire to expand westward, and so they too pulled away. Negotiations ending the war essentially left the territorial claims where they had been at the beginning. Over the next century, Russia and Persia maintained a good trade relationship and continued to hold a common desire to prevent Ottoman expansion. This did not, however, prevent them from using opportunities to take each other's territory in the Caucasus. One such opportunity came for Russia in the form of the Pashtun-Afghan invasion into Persia beginning in January 1721. This destabilized the country, allowing internal rebellion to develop and go unchecked. Russia had no involvement until a rebel attack in the city of Shamaki left several Russian merchants dead. Tsar Peter I offered aid to the Persian Shah Hussein to help put down the rebellion under the guise of not wanting to allow Persia to become so destabilized that the Ottomans could take over. There was, however, a cost to this aid. Several Persian provinces that bordered with Russian territory in the Caucasus. 
Peter's envoy to the Shah conveniently neglected to discuss this in their conversations. The aid ended up being of little use, however, as Shah Hussein surrendered and abdicated his throne to the Afghan leader Mahmud Hotak in October 1722. Peter gave aid to the Shah's son, Tamasp, in exchange for the territorial concessions about which the Shah had no clue to begin with. These wars were ended with two treaties, the Treaty of St. Petersburg between Russia and Persia and the Treaty of Constantinople between Russia and the Ottoman Empire. These ceded a great deal of Persian territory to Russia and some to the Ottomans as well. The Russians and Ottomans also had a side agreement that if Persia did not agree to these, they would install a puppet on the Persian throne. The whole agreement was short-lived, however. Negotiations in 1732 and 1735 returned to Persia most of the territory taken a decade later in exchange for an alliance against the Ottomans with whom the Russians were about to begin another war. The status of the Caucasian territories was again brought into question with the Treaty of Gorgievsky in 1783, which shifted the Kingdom of Georgia from Persian oversight to Russian. This was followed by a similar shift from nearby Dagestan. In 1794, when a new Shah, Aga Mohammed Khan, took the Persian throne, he asserted himself by invading this territory. In a matter of months, he had retaken Armenia, Georgia, Dagestan, and Azerbaijan. He also completely destroyed the Georgian city of Tbilisi in the process. Catherine the Great, Empress of Russia, planned an expedition to take the land back, but made the mistake of putting it under the generalship of Count Valerian Zubar, the younger brother of her paramour and a less than skilled leader. She hopes to replace the Shah with his brother, Morteza Kola Khan, who had defected to Russia a few years earlier and would follow its lead. The war was instead ended by Catherine's successor, Paul I, who recalled the troops for other purposes. Beginning in 1804, Russia and Persia again warred over territory between the Caspian and Black Seas. The Kingdom of Georgia had again moved into Russian hands in 1801. The new Persian king, Fat Ali Shah Qajar, wanted it and some other territories back. To that end, the Persians allied with Napoleon in hopes that the French emperor's attacks in Russia would bolster their own cause. Instead, the Persians were brought along for the ride as the French learned how difficult an invasion of Russia could truly be. This war ended with Russia keeping the territory it began with and gaining a great deal more. The Treaty of Galistan sent the border between Russia and Persia to the Aras River and gave them exclusive military access to the Caspian Sea. One last war over which of the two controlled the Caucasus was fought between 1826 and 1828 when the Persian king Fat Ali Shah took the advice of British agents who encouraged him to invade after the death of Tsar Alexander, whose death, they believed, destabilized Russia enough for Persia to recoup its losses from two decades earlier. However, the British agents were wrong. Russia was far from destabilized, and these invasions only gave the new Tsar Nicholas I, an opportunity to show his strength. This war ended with the Treaty of Turkmenche, which reasserted Russian control of the Caspian Sea and the border at the Aras River. It also ceded a great deal more Persian-Caucasian territory to Russia and required a 20 million ruble war indemnity be paid by Persia to Russia. These territories remained in Russian and then Soviet control until the collapse of the USSR in the early 1990s. During the 20th century, 
Russia, then the USSR, vied with Great Britain for influence, if not control, over Persia proper. In 1907, they split it into two zones of influence, with Britain in the south and Russia in the north. The British sought to hold this part of Persia to ensure that it would not be used to invade its crown jewel, India, and to protect the oil resources to which they had an exclusive trade deal. During the Great War, Persia tried to remain neutral but was fought over by the Ottomans, the British, and the Russians, resulting in the deaths of over two million Persians. A post-war coup overthrew the previous government, replacing it with Reza Shah Pahlavi, who allied with Britain against Russian-Soviet influence. During World War II, Persia, now called Iran, again tried to stay neutral, and again was invaded and held by Russia and Britain, with the idea of maintaining Allied supply lines and the Persian oil fields. Both agreed to leave after the war had ended, but the USSR had to be reminded by the newly formed United Nations of its agreement to do so. In the end, the Russians didn't see a need to invade and conquer Persia. Their focus lay in the West and Europe. Persia simply didn't hold their interest. <laughs>